welcome everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we've got a great speaker for you again tonight. Uh, another one of our popular speakers who has come back again and again. Uh, we keep getting blessed more and more with his insights and his wisdom and his personality. So uh, all of these are, are treasures to behold if you haven't already been to any of his presentations. So let's go ahead and do our opening prayer. So we'll go ahead and relax. Take a nice deep breath and look for that connection that we all have within ourselves for the divine essence of the universe, because we are all connected to the divine in one way or another. And as we slow our minds down, as we relax our bodies, as we separate ourselves from the physical world around us and turn our attention inside, we can more easily find that connection that we have with the divine. And you may feel this connection as a source of peace and joy. And if it's not easily found, simply imagine that you do feel a sense of peace and joy within you. And that imagined feeling will attract your mind to that connection where you can truly connect with the divine essence of the universe in the here and now. And so as we sit in this divine space, this space of divine connection, let's first give thanks for all the blessings that we have as part of the human experience. Let's give thanks for the blessing of life itself, without which we would not be able to experience the joy of companionship and camaraderie that we have in groups like this, where we get to discuss wonderful topics and connect with others of like mind. Let us give thanks for the joys and the blessings that we have in friends and family, because these are the people who mean the most to us, who we have the strongest connections with, and who help make the journey through life more and more enjoyable. And let's even give thanks for the blessings of challenges, which serve to make us stronger and better in many different ways. And as we take a moment to allow ourselves to resonate with the idea of blessings, with the energy of blessings, with the energy of the divine within this inner space, let's now turn our attention out into the world to those who are in need of a blessing. And let us send this energy of blessings out into the world to bless all of those who are in need of one or more blessings. Okay, let's focus on serving the divine by offering a vision of a world where every person is healthy happy, fulfilled, and joyously engaged in activities that make the best use of their innate potential. Let's offer a vision of every person on this planet getting exactly what they need, when they need it, and in a spirit of love and gratitude. And because we know that the spirit of the divine is responsive and that all visions that are offered to the divine are manifested in one way or another in the best way possible, we know that our visions of blessing the world will in fact manifest. And by the law of karma, everything that we send out, we get back multiplied. And those blessings that we send to others come right back to us to bless our own lives in ways that we cannot now imagine. 
And with this, we give thanks once again. Thanks for the opportunity to serve. And thanks for the blessings which we are able to convey upon our fellow human beings, as well as thanks for the blessings that come to us now and always. And with this, we release everything to the infinite wisdom of the divine. Amen. And so it is. Thank you. Okay, so to introduce our speaker tonight, uh, David Schroeder, uh, who is going to be giving us a, a wonderful uh, bit of interesting ideas to think about. Uh, David has his own website where he offers coaching and counseling services. Um, website is transitionpathways.com. And I am referencing that now to kind of give you a bit of information about uh, David. And it says here, and I completely agree with this, David Schroeder is the ideal counselor, coach, and leadership guide for individuals, couples, and organizations who seek a pathway through difficult and upsetting transitions. And isn't that when we need a guide and a counselor, most of all, is when we're going through transition? Wonderful service. I'm so glad that he is serving in that way. Uh, with over 25 years of experience serving firefighters, the homeless, families, couples, and individuals with a variety of issues, David recognizes the raw yearning for mutual understanding and regard. He also knows how to how such yearning can, in time, shift into the joy of being seen, heard, and accepted. This shift is the result of the renewed authenticity and growth that people who had once given up on their lives can rekindle in themselves as they move forward to achieve their full potential. I love how he's written that statement. That is absolutely wonderful. Of course, he has all of the standard training and, and licensing for someone in his profession. He's been educated in so many different ways. And he is also a great example of following your intuition. And if you haven't yet heard the story of how he and his wife, Therese, have met, by following their intuitions, that is definitely a story you want to hear at some point. Good evening, all. Glad to be with you again. And Alan, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I am humbled. So, uh, tonight's talk is uh, Here Comes the Sun. And uh, today's Father's Day, so we pay homage and honor to Father Sky, as well as all the earthly fathers on the planet. Um, and Father Sky holds the sun, our star sun. And so I thought it was appropriate to focus on the sun today. And this coming Tuesday, the 21st, is the summer solstice, which is all about the sun as well. So let me start out with a short little story. An anthropologist once went to a indigenous tribe in a faraway land. And in his journal, he wrote that every day, just before the dawn, the members of the tribe gathered outside to perform a strange ritual. They started to yell and crash objects together in order to make a lot of noise. And only when the sun finally rose above the horizon did the Indians stop the rite. This helps the sun win the battle against the darkness and rise again, said someone. Astonished, the anthropologist asked the tribal leader if they really thought that the sun only rose because they made all this noise, which seemed to him a bit irrational. The leader smiled and answered, you are so silly. Of course the sun will rise, regardless of our ritual. The sun already has won this fight against the dark night 
a long, long time ago. The sun inside of each of us, however, still has a struggle to win the fight against our lower instincts. And this is why we make all this noise to help our inner sons triumph over our dark side. To me, this story emphasizes much of the symbolism of the sun. And especially in, in ancient cultures, they had a lot of homage and they honored the sun. And our inner sun, you can kind of see it as a mirror that we see the sun in the sky. And by watching the rising of the sun, we are also watching the rising of our souls towards spiritual ascension. The sun can be seen as a microcosm of the soul. In many cultures, ancient cultures, the sun, like I said, was honored. It symbolized the creator's light and love for us. And it represents one way of connection to source and our higher self. The sun can seem as a reflection of divine light. And we must realize that this light is within us. And the importance of holding on to this light, especially in our difficult and dark times. And our ability to sustain this light is what keeps us in that awareness and the presence of love and our I am essence. Jesus and other spiritual masters and the native cultures valued and honored the energy of the sun. And it was a way of communing with God and a written example of this is in the biblical passage in Psalms 113 that speaks of the spiritual significance of the sun, not only as a marker of time, but also as a symbol of the divine and how it's to be praised. From the rising of the sun and its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The sun, I believe, represents perseverance. Its light and energy are always there. And it symbolizes the determination and the strength and the power with that we all must embrace and try to live in our daily lives. Napoleon Boulevard said some time ago, if I had to choose a religion, the sun as the universal giver of life would be my God. All of life on planet earth is dependent on the energy and the light of our sun to sustain us. The sun, I believe, calls us to the awakening of life and to the essence of our soul. And the sun beckons us to explore the mysteries of love and life offered with each dawning of a new day. It inspires us with yet another fresh start on life's journey. In the morning light, of the sun ask us to be open and allow life to unfold with its infinite insights and knowing to be dawned on us if we rise through the process of inner awakening and ascension. The rising sun signifies that the darkness of nights is always followed by the experiences of light. The light always surrounds darkness. And it affirms to us that our periods of darkness and struggles are followed by light. 
In fact, the light is still in that darkness, whether we would acknowledge it and know it to be. But the reality is that light is always there within the darkness. A candle flame expresses that because within the darkness, the light is surrounding that dark space of what I call the sacred emptiness. So light is always there. Love is always there. And as a new day dawns, we are offered an opportunity to let go of what no longer serves us and to begin the new day free and refreshed. A number of years ago when I was working on my book, Just Be Love, I became aware that this idea of falling in love is old school. We don't need to fall into something we already are, which is love. And as I was pondering one day, as the morning sun was rising, I came to the phrase, the importance of rising, to rise as love, to the grander perspective of ourselves. And during the sunrise and the sunset, I would ask you to chant the word hue, H-U, hue, hue. And as you watch the sun rise and you watch the sun set, chanting the word hue is an ancient word for God. And it's the love call to God. And often chanting that word as the sun rises or sets, you, you connect more fully with your I am essence and the God essence, the light within as well as around you. So next time you're with the sunrise or the sunset, just chant briefly for a time the word you and just notice the peace and the contentment and the love and the energy and the light that comes within you to that chant. So this coming Tuesday is the summer solstice. The term solstice comes from the Latin and the first three letters, S-O-L, soul, in Latin means sun, ironically. And sista means to stand still. So on the day of the summer solstice, we have the longest period of daylight in the northern hemisphere. And so the sun seems to stand still. And it's in the highest point in the sky that day. And as the sun is the highest point and we have the most daylight in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Southern Hemisphere, ironically, is their shortest day of daylight. As above, so below. The light is always there, but one and one side of Earth has a longer time of it for a day and the other hemisphere has the shortest day. And minute by minute, day after day, that will reverse once again in that cycle. Ancient cultures built structures to honor the summer and winter solstice, as well as the spring and the fall equinoxes. The structures of the pyramids in Egypt, Stonehenge in England, and the Mayan structures in, at Chichen Itza and Tulum in the Yucatan Peninsula. They built these specific structures to honor and align the solstice and that longest and shortest times of light on the planet. In Stonehenge, if you stand in the middle of the circle of stones, inside the circle of stones, and you look to the northeast as the sun rises, 250 feet outside of the circle to the northeast is called the heel stone. 
It's about a five foot stone, nothing fancy about it. But as the sun rises, the tip of that stone begins to light up on the day of the solstice. They knew and they paid homage to the power and the majesty of the sun on that particular day. The summer solstice is known as the fire festival around the world. And on this day, people all over the world celebrate with fire rituals. In Europe, the solstice is celebrated by many places. They build a huge bonfire. And to remind people that bonfire is there to remind people the heat and the radiance of the summer sun. In Wales, a huge wheel is lit, a fire, and is rolled down a mountainside. And if the fire is still going on that wheel, when it hits the bottom of the mountain, that's an indication that the bounty in the fall will be plenty. In Norway, which is one of the farthest points north, the sun barely sets. So they stay up all night with the fire, celebrating the sun. Honoring the solstice reminds us of how prosperous each day and season really is in our life. That nothing on earth will last forever. Gifts of the spirit need to be taken to heart and appreciated, not for granted. We are to accept the cycle of birth, death, rebirth, or renewal. The more we appreciate the aspects of people and things in our life, the deeper our love can be for what we truly have in present time. The solstice is a time of acceptance and letting go, a time to remember, to be fully present, embracing the energy and the, the richness of the here and now. The solstice will offer, come Tuesday, an energetic opening, another portal and gateway for us to step through and into. And there is much celestial potential during the time of the solstice. And the sun brings the higher energy and warmth and extended light into our lives. Symbolically, the summer solstice represents empowerment, enlightenment, and awakening. The solstice calls us to celebrate moving forward in life, advancing further into the light and the higher consciousness and deeper love and reverence for all that is in our lives. It's about remembering and honoring that light and that love within us and to let that light and that love radiate out into the world. My prayer to you this day, as we honor the sun, may the love, light and power and peace of the rising sun ignite your soul, warm your heart, and illuminate your way this day and all days. On the website, Alan has been so gracious to post a solstice meditation uh, that I asked him to post that if you're so interested on the day of, on Tuesday, you may do that meditation. And I've also posted, had him post the words that George Harrison wrote to the song, Here Comes the Sun. I believe that 
several of the words and the lines in his song were prophesizing the times we're in right now in terms of the earth changes and the changes going on with humanity. So I believe he was prophesizing these times. And the sun is having an awful lot to do with humanity waking up in these exciting yet challenging times. Here comes the sun, folks. Embrace the light. Embrace the love. The love and the innocence and the goodness you are. I mean. Oh, definitely another wonderful presentation there, David. <laughs> um, yeah, I was taking notes and there's definitely several layers of meaning <clears throat> in, in a lot of what you were saying. Um, what, what really kind of struck me the most is when you were talking about uh, the ritual of, of chanting and making noise to help the sun overcome the darkness. Um, and then the, the whole thing about uh, whether or not that actually, uh, let's see here, I'll get things going on that too. Sorry, <laughs> trying to juggle a couple of different jobs here. Uh, but the idea that you presented was that the, the people who are engaging in that ritual understand that they're not really responsible for causing the sun to rise but you made a suggestion in there that by engaging in that ritual, they are in effect strengthening their own ability to overcome the darkness within themselves. So it's a form of self-healing. So that, that was really wonderful. I remember reading something about that where a lot of rituals were had alternate meanings or alternate ways of, of going. So that was that was really interesting. Is, is that a type of healing work that you do in your practice? Uh, Maybe not to not. that exact thing, but something <laughs> along a similar line. Yeah, I, uh, one of the things um, I often, with some clients, if they got a lot of anger issues, in order to move the energy, I have them do bat work, where they literally pound on a cushion with a tennis racket and uh, release that anger, that frustration. And they use the voice as well to get, they yell at whoever they've been angry with and whatever uh, as a way to just move the energy. Um, and sometimes I'll work with, when I'm doing body work with the person, I might push down in their gut and have them make a primal sound in terms of their anger, their sadness, whatever, um, as another way to get that energy and that voice out. Uh, to begin to move the energy in a more constructive and, and powerful way. So sound is vibration and frequency. And we're not meant to stifle <laughs> the sound. Um, and, you know, more, more people, a lot of people are embarrassed to do this kind of work. But once they get going with it, it's, it's, it's extremely powerful and releasing. And it's amazing how much better they feel after they kind of just let it fly, if you will, in a safe and a uh, healing and, and honoring um, container, if you will. So, yeah. So noise is a great healing tool to get to get our energy moving and get things out and released. So, yep. It's a little Sounds more messy than just <laughs> shining the light. You know, first you have to see what you got to make room to let the light in. huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And often underneath the anger is sadness. And that's the bottom line. And, and so releasing the anger is a way to get in touch with the sadness. Uh, Alan, when you mentioned <laughs> about my schooling, uh, pretty much everything I learned in school, I don't use anymore. <laughs> um, and I, as many people will test, I'm not your conventional therapist. Um, and, you know, we're really learning a lot more. We're coming back to the, the, to the term new age actually means a span of time. What comes around goes around. So a lot of the healing mechanisms that were going on thousands of years ago, essential oils, frequency healing, energy healing, body work, it's all coming back. We're kind of going full circle. Mm 
go figure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. I think yep. they say the eyes are the, what is your eyes are? The, the eyes are the windows of the soul. And yeah. what we've learned is where you look affects how you feel. So mm -hmm. he does all the, release a lot of your trauma with your eyes, your yep. eye movement. Yeah. So I, and, I'd like to add to this uh, aggregate of here comes the sun. Um, I um, made up a, a square dance, if you will, to the song, Here Comes the Sun. And I've never been able to get a group of people to do it because it requires open space. And the large spaces I've had access to always had poles in them. And that won't work. But here's here's what it, what it goes. And it just feels so wonderful. So the beginning of Little Darling, it's been a long and lonely winter. Everybody's in a circle and, and, go, and the circle is going is skipping around and then you have one out of every four people make a right hand star and as the song proceeds and says here comes the sun little darling and then they pick up another person arm in arm so that the star extends so now it's a star of two people going around here comes the sun little darling. and then it's a star of three people going around yeah, cool. And then it's all right. Da, 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 da. They reverse the star and the person in the center backs up and the person on the outside of the star circles in and makes a right hand star and they go in the opposite direction. And if you've ever been in a, a, a square dance or a, or a whatever the other kind of dances, I forget. Um, it just feels wonderful to do that. There's a certain, you know, um, vortex of energy you tap into when you reverse that right hand star the left hand star and then you drop one person off each with each verse as it says little darling in the second verse and they join the regular circle again and keep going and it just fits perfectly with the meter and the measures and the words mm -hmm. and you end up doing a ritual dance to celebrate this song this great song here comes the sun and I, yeah. I hope we get to do that sometime. Yeah. I'm in, you know, Diane, again, I, I'm on the path of Sufi. Samuel Lewis created Universal Dances yes. of Peace, which is part of my group. We're actually already just signed up for the World Parliament of Religions, which will be in Chicago in 23. But Sunday at three o'clock, we rent space from the Unity Churches in Grand Rapids and for two hours... Exactly what you said. We dance. Very meaningful. The Sufi glance yeah. is just looking into each other's eyes. It is. I love. I love the dances. So I'm right there with you. We'll find your space. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Beautiful. You know, David, there was another thing that you mentioned that I really like. And I think it's probably an NLP thing about reframing, but your term sacred emptiness, uh, causing people to, to look at something that may have been interpreted in a negative way and giving it a new interpretation of something positive. The, um, the darkness, just as death, grief, is intended to be a great teacher. It's not really meant to be the demise. And a candle flame, if you, um, I realized a number of years ago in meditation that just above the wick of a candle is a dark space. And you can literally stick an unlit match all the way through it and pull it back out and it won't light. And that's where the, that term, the sacred emptiness. And around that darkness is a blue tint on the flame. To me, that's where the divine is. And then on the outside of that tint is the light. And so the, the divine is in both the light and the dark of our lives. And that light is always surrounding what we call darkness, grief, pain, and such. Yeah. The ego has a hard time with that concept, but <laughs> the candle flame illustrates that, that the divine is in it all, and the light is always around all. So, yeah. Yep. I think there's probably a similar 
pattern at work uh, as far as the the calm within the storm or the center of a hurricane being extremely still? Yep. Yep. There's an, a lot in nature. It gives countless examples of how the light and the dark, you know, the rainbow shows up in the midst of a, of a storm with the light and the darkness. It's all existing simultaneously, if you will. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so David, just to make it official, I'm going to open the floor. So if anyone has any questions for David or comments or stories to share. So, David, when you were talking about, you know, bringing in the sunrise and there are also ceremonies, rituals for putting the sun to bed, that life is cyclical. And in actuality, the sun is always there. It doesn't turn away from us. The earth is actually turning, so we turn from the sun. But darkness isn't bad, it just is. And like what your analogy was wonderful. It's a place of silence and peace and healing and just reframing it like that. And the sun always follows, always yeah. does. That's and if I can good. piggyback on that, um, God never, if you think of God representing the sun, that God never turns away from us. We turn away from God. So just the analogy of the sun is always there, just the earth is tilting in a, or moving in a different hemisphere, if you will. Uh, the same is true with God that we we turn away, not so much that God turns away from us. Yes, yeah, so thank you. So it looks like Linda's raising her hand. Uh, Linda, go ahead and ask your question. Um, uh, hi, hi, everybody. Um, the question I have is, I'm a new a newbie um, in meditating, and I noticed lately from my breathing. I'm able to go beyond just trying to stay silent. I'm starting to see a warm circle glow that looks like the sun, but it's clouded with, with um, its veil behind a cloudy um, area, but I can see the glow coming through. So my question is, does that mean I'm going deeper in my meditation and does it mean I'm about to have a breakthrough and that eventually the sun will be brighter and more yellow and more um, visible? Thank you. Wonderful, Linda. Um, what I'm getting is you're little by little, yes, you're penetrating, you're going beyond the veil, beyond the illusion. Um, you're gaining in increased clarity. Um, you're breaking free of the fear of seeing uh, what needs to be seen. And you're, you're feeling more worthy and inviting and accepting of allowing that true essence and light uh, and truth to uh, begin to resonate and, and uh, come more into your, your daily living and daily practice. So keep working it. Uh, and just I think the more you keep meditating and you just focus on that light don't worry about the, the fuzziness or the shadow around it just keep focusing on that light and that beautiful essence that it's offering you listen, ask ask in the meditation ask the light what, it, what does it want you to know what's the message What's the insight that it would like you to, to embrace and more fully come into your, um, into your life and your process? So you're on the right path and you're ready. You're ready now. Um, and so just keep working it. Keep accepting it. Feel worthy and deserving of it. Um, it's already there. You just need to embrace it that much more and accept its reality. So kudos to you. Thank you for sharing. I, I, I have a recommendation. What's going on in the world, we have an opportunity to be the light of the world. We have a, we have a responsibility to touch into the energy of the sun. We are symbolic of the sun, and we can send light and love to all people of all nations. 
without discrimination. When, when, the, when the sun shines, it shines on all people. We are representatives of the sun. And what David did a wonderful, fantastic presentation. So did Alan. So did all of you. But we have to, we have to share the light. We have to, it's, it's now. We can, we can change the future if we are for all people. We are literally universalists. That's what we are. That's what Hamid Bey, the founder of the Copy Fellowship was. Things that I witnessed with him, he was a universalist. And, and the Copy Fellowship is. But I recommend you just simply, every day, I send light and love to all people of all nations. Peace, peace, peace among all nations. And all nations will hear us internally and then we act and react. We are here as representatives of the light. And David did it so beautifully. Let's take this and every day, every day, spread the light. Be the spread, light. Be the light. Be the light of the world. Be the sun. Be everything positive. And we will have, in, we will have changes. But we are being called. And, and David, with his wonderful presentation, Alan did a great job. We all, you know, we all feel this way. Now we have to act with the power of the mind linking with light, with the sun, and then take that power and spread it to all people of all nations without discrimination. All people are equal. And we are here as representatives to pass this on. That's why we're here. That's why this has been a beautiful evening. Is absolutely so. That's my sharing tonight. Thank you, John. If um, if I may add, as the Earth changes begin to accelerate on the planet, and the sun is sending increased solar winds and solar flares to our planet, um, us woo woos, if you will. <laughs> A lot more people are going to start knocking on our door and say, you guys know something. You have a wisdom and an insight. And um, in the not too distant future, as more and more people get more awakened and curious, uh, don't be a bit surprised if you get more people coming to you asking for information and resources. Um of how we're doing what we're doing and why. Yeah. Awesome. And that's one way when John said about being the light of the world, uh, it's my understanding that our light and our insights and the work we've done over the years, we're going to be seen as more of those way showers and we're not going to be so criticized or seen as weird or woo-woos woo -woos, and people aren't going to be so afraid of us anymore because they're, they're going to realize we know something that they need to know in order to move forward in this um, in this expansion and, and ascension process. So thank you.